Hi guys, it's Minx here, and this will hopefully be a regular monthly spooky news show that I'm now going to be doing on the channel once a month. I'm not too good at doing scripted content, so I do apologize if I sound a little off to begin with while I'm learning how to read scripted content properly. It's just not something I do often. Everything I usually do is completely off the cuff. Like this intro is completely off the cuff. Basically, the premise of the show is I'm going to go through some of the new releases coming up for the next month that I personally think are going to be worth checking out and uh, hopefully hype them up a little bit for you, make you aware of them. I'm going to probably pick a few new announcements as well um, that have been announced this month in terms of um, spooky games coming out and that kind of thing. And I'll also chat about some of the things that I enjoyed the most this month myself. Hope that all makes sense. And I really would appreciate as much feedback as I can get in the comments. This will very likely do badly for views, I'm sure. But if you can help me out at all with likes and comments on the video, it will allow me to keep doing this in the future. And I think it's a nice little thing to add to the channel's repertoire. Something a little different. Anyway, let's move on. First up this July, we have um, quite a few things that are on my radar, though it's worth mentioning there are often small indie productions that haven't had the marketing put into them that I'm not aware of until they kind of spring up on Steam at the last minute. First up, we have the very awesome looking My Friendly Neighborhood launching this month. It's launching on July 18th on PC. I played the demo a while ago, and it's one of the few good looking mascot horror games out there. I don't really like mascot horror very much, but this one really nailed the correct blend of um, horror, gameplay, and just a really interesting aesthetic. Uh, you play as Gordon, who's a repairman sent into a nightmare version of Sesame Street, essentially. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the demo of this, at least. The puppets are out to get you. There's lots of horrific creatures waiting in the depths of the studio. And it has like a Resident Evil vibe as well with safe rooms and puzzles. And ah, it's excellent. I'm really looking forward to playing it. I'll be 100% covering this with a long play once it comes out, when it launches later this month. Next up, we have the long-awaited sequel to 2016's Oxenfree. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Oxenfree was a pretty decent little horror title about a bunch of friends who opened up a supernatural rift. It wasn't bad. I didn't think it was amazing, but it was okay. I quite liked it. Oxenfree 2 launches July 12th with the subtitle Lost Signals. Essentially, you take the role of Riley from the first game, who is now investigating bizarre radio signals that are plaguing her hometown. I'm going to guess from what we've seen in the trailer, it's going to be very similar to the first one. Uh, 2D side-scrolling with uh, entities to avoid, some aspects of stealth, a heavy story, and hopefully a pretty good spooky experience. That is launching July 12th on PC, like I said, and I believe to consoles too. Finally, we have Remnant from the Ashes 2, which has now been shortened to Remnant 2, which is a lot easier to say than Remnant from the Ashes. This is a Souls Lake with a strong horror aesthetic. Um, I played this originally co-op on stream, although the second one I might make into a long play, we'll see. Basically, you have guns and melee, and you take on various horrific creatures in a post-apocalyptic setting. The first one had some really cool creepy designs, but this one actually seems to take it to a even, like, further level. Uh, the trailer shows ghosts, rednecks with chainsaws, and Lovecraftian, like, entities emerging from the abyss. All prevalent, all center stage. I think it's got some really badass monster designs, actually. And I'm looking forward to playing this co-op, uh, Remnant 2. It launches July 25th of this month, and I'm all for it. All right, now we move on to new game announcements. June is obviously a big month for new announcements because we have Summer Game Fest. We also had Nintendo Direct. And while horror was a little light on the ground in these, I do want to mention that the Lies of P demo, which is a Souls-like Bloodborne-esque game where you play as Pinocchio, is amazing, has a fantastic horror aesthetic, and I really recommend checking it out. It's a fantastic demo that lasts a long time too. Just a big chunk of the game. I did a full playthrough on Twitch and the void is still up if you want to check out my playthrough of that. There's a link in the description to my Twitch. And um, yeah, you should check it out. It's pretty, pretty numb. Oh my god. Um, I also am really hyped for the Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon remake. A lot of people don't like Dark Moon, but it's actually my favorite Luigi's Mansion game. I think it's the best of the three. And we're getting a remake of that in 2024. So pump for that too. In terms of the new announcements I want to pick, none of these are actually from Summer Game Fest events itself, so they may have slipped under your radar. 
There's a game coming out called Hollow Cocoon. It's a new Japanese horror game. Uh, it's been announced for quarter four 2023, so the end of this year. It's set in 1980s Japan, and you take the role of a character called Minato Jinba as he goes to visit his terminally ill grandmother in a mountain village. Uh, the game is detailing having multiple endings, accessibility options to reduce motion sickness, which is excellent because I hate motion sickness, and a wide range of difficulty settings blended in with all the horror and things you would expect. I love Japanese horror games, and I really like the aesthetic of sort of like lost, mysterious Japanese villages and that kind of thing. So I'm really looking forward to this one. It has a premise based around silkworms, which is an interesting idea, and a... there's very little information available at the moment in terms of like what the game's going to fully be like, but I'm excited for it just because of what it is. Next up, we have sci-fi horror Fort Solace. Sci-fi is definitely in at the moment, and um, this one is coming out pretty soon. It got announced for an August release date. This is a narrative-focused sci-fi horror. Very, very big focus on a deep narrative to find and uncover the secrets of an isolated mining base on Mars. I think you take the role of an engineer there called Jack Leary, who is exploring the base. Um, there's a lot of AAA pedigree in this. Some of the dev team worked on Red Dead Redemption and titles like that, and... I'm kind of glad they're focusing on exploration and narrative over combat because we all know the Callisto Protocol was an absolute disaster. I definitely prefer narrative over combat focus in games, um, especially if it's an unknown sort of like form of combat. I guess that makes sense. Anyway, this is coming out on PS5 and PC this August, and I definitely will be covering it. Definitely uh, one to look out for. And finally, my third pick of announcements for this month. Atari isn't really a name you hear much of these days, but they are rebooting one of their original IP and one of the original horror games that ever existed, which is Haunted House. Um, <laughs> it's a very unusual IP to... Uh, to, to resurrect, as it were. It originally came out in, I believe, 1981. It is, uh, where well, you were just a pair of eyes walking through a creepy mansion, essentially. But now we have a uh, isometric, fully 3D rendered mansion, it looks like here. And the concept is a roguelike, uh, where you creep through the mansion with stealth, and no two playthroughs are the same as you explore the ever-changing mansion. Uh, there's not very much information, there's no trailer or anything yet, just a few screenshots that I'm throwing up on screen right now. But overall, I like the idea of resurrecting such an old franchise. I'm just interested to see where it goes. And yeah, I am looking forward to, uh, to checking this out when it launches. No release date as of yet. Anyway, guys, finally, I'm going to do my picks of the month things that I believe were worth checking out this month. I already mentioned the Lies of P demo, but this month was amazing for horror. One of the best in years. We have had Amnesia the Bunker, Killer Frequency, Decarnation, Stasis Bone Totem. Like, this was like a horror festival. There are even some I haven't even got around to checking out properly yet that will have videos coming very soon that came out this month too. It's just so much stuff that it's been hard to keep up with everything, especially as Chrism has been and still is sick. So I have been doing this all by myself this month. Anyway, um, I really, really <laughs> uh, would recommend out of all of those, I'm going to go with Stasis Bone Totem as my favorite game I've played this month. Uh, it's very close between all four, I will say. They were all excellent. But uh, Stasis Bone Totem, just because it pulled on my emotional heartstrings the most, I think is the game that I recommend from this month. Anyway. Hopefully this wasn't too weird and I didn't sound too strange. Like I said, some of it was scripted, some of it wasn't. Please give me feedback in the comments. It's okay to let me know, you know, what needs to be changed and what needs to be updated. Are there other sections you'd like to see on a little video like this? Any other things you'd like to hear about? Please let me know in the comment section. I'm all down for uh, changing this and uh, sculpting it around what you guys want to hear from me. And uh, yeah, that's that. We'll see you really soon for more long plays and other content. I'm going to be starting my top 10s finally this month as well. And it's going to be a hopefully fantastic July for spookiness. I'll see you then, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.